So you've inherited this property. First of all, I'm sorry about the passing of your loved one. Um, but it's you've got a lot of information, a lot of things coming at you, probably all at once. It's pretty overwhelming. I have lots of other videos about different aspects of this. But today I'm going to talk about five things I think you really need to be aware of that will just make it a lot easier before things you know happen and you're like, oh shoot, I didn't know that. But be sure to stick around till the end because I have something that I think you'll like, a little freebie for you that will definitely make your life easier. But anyway, let's get right to it. I'm gonna start, number one is the mortgage payment. I get asked this a lot, Annie, should I keep paying it? Like we're about to sell it, does it really matter? A couple of things here. Number one, if there are funds available, keep paying the mortgage payment. It's just easier, keeps things simple. Uh, you won't incur any late charges. If funds are tight and maybe you have siblings and no one really wants to step up and chip in for this part of the process, you can always call the bank. Sometimes banks will give you, you know, forgiveness for a couple months if they know you're selling the house, but every bank is different. The biggest thing you need to know is do not get at least three months behind on a mortgage payment because banks can file what's called a notice of default after three months. And depending on where you are in the country, they can start foreclosure proceedings right away. And it can just get really messy and ugly. In inherited property situations, you do have a little bit more leeway, but again, it just gets way more complicated. So don't go there. Uh, so either talk to the to the bank, whoever holds the mortgage, or just keep paying it. It'll make your life easy, just easier. Number two, utilities. Yes, you have to keep paying the utilities to keep them on the power, the uh, you know for electricity, the water. You don't want to say, well, no one's really going to be in the house, so why do I need them on? Because if you're selling the house, for one, inspectors are going to need the water and power on. Buyers are going to want lights on. If you're having any work done before the sale, you need all those things. So keep on, keep the utilities on, and the landscaping. And if there's a pool, keep all that maintenance going. Uh, you really don't want to just think, well, we're getting the house ready for sale. I'm going to, you know, cut back on the landscaper for the next two months or the pool guy. It's really not a big deal because I've seen people do that. And all of a sudden the pool's green and the landscape kind of gets out of control pretty fast. And so the cost to really get it back to where it needs to be for the sale can be higher than had you just kept up on the maintenance. So keep up on those maintenance things. Number three is make sure you have a copy of the living trust. And actually I should have started with that at the beginning that I'm assuming the house was in a living trust that you're not going through the probate process with all that. Although I guess in some of these situations, it doesn't really matter. But in this case, you have the house is in a trust and depending on how your, your relative, your parents or your loved one had the house in the living trust, maybe they had an attorney do it. A lot of times the attorney will give a big binder with all the legal documents. In that case, ask the attorney to get you an electronic copy. It's so much easier moving forward. I mean, it's great to have the binder there. That can come in handy in some situations, which I'll talk about in a sec, but the title company is going to need a copy of the full trust have an electronic copy it's just you know here you go here here's an email um and some you know your attorney can help you with this let's just say that your parents or your loved one just did a simple living trust on their own they just have a document take it to you know a fedex place or a mailbox place get it scanned it'll just make your life easier um okay next step okay number four is make sure you have a minimum of five copies, certified copies of the death certificate of the person's house that you're selling. Um, you want more than one because you're going to be asked for that for proof of, you know, the death numerous places. And I've had some people say, well, I scanned it and I'm just going to email them. Well, unfortunately, a lot of places won't take a scan copy or even just a paper copy that you want to turn in. They want the certified copy. So when you get the original death certificate, get a minimum of five certified copies. You know, they're gonna charge you for each one, just pay it. Again, it's gonna make your life easier than having to go back for an extra trip to get more certified copies. Okay, last tip, last tip of the day is make sure there is a bank account with the name, or the bank account is in the name of the trust. 
let's just say that your loved one's name was, you know, Bob Smith and they had a living trust, the Bob Smith Living Trust. There has to be a bank account in the Bob Smith Living Trust bank account name. The bank account has to be in that name. If you just have your dad's, you know, bank accounts, Bob Smith, that's his name. When you go to close the house and you're getting this windfall of money, the title company cannot give you a check or wire the money into Bob Smith's bank account. It doesn't work that way. They need the bank account to read Bob Smith's trust account, Bob Smith's, you know, living trust dated, whatever the title is. So that's where you're going to have to make sure that the bank, you, you'll have to take in the copy of the trust, the living trust, show them. So either they'll open up a new account or you can verify there is, you know, a lot of times when people get their living trust done through an attorney, attorney will tell them right out of the gates, make sure you have a bank account open with this name, but maybe they only put $20 in it. So you aren't really aware that it even exists. So take the, your documents, the living trust documents, go down to the bank and make sure there is a bank account so that when the funds from the sale are ready, it can be released right away. You know, again, I've had clients or I've heard other people, usually I tell my clients ahead of time, but I have heard of times where it's closing day and no one remembered to tell the person to make sure that bank account was open. So they're racing around trying to open a bank account the last minute to get the funds released. Okay, so those are five things I think will help you just be a little bit more prepared for what's to come. Again, don't hesitate to reach out my email by commenting below anything. I'm happy to answer questions. And now to my little freebie. So I've talked about it before, but I do have um, a workbook. You can buy it on Amazon, but I'm happy to give you a digital copy for free. It's all about things, you know, questions to answer about how to be prepared for when it's your time. Again, no one likes to talk about death, but it's going to happen, everybody. At some point, hopefully way later than sooner, but why not be prepared? So I can email you this copy. It just uh, it, It's a way to just be super prepared. It's not a legal document, but it's a practical document. Legal documents don't talk about practical things in your life. Go ahead and email me and just say estate planning document, and I'd be happy to give that to you for free. So until next time, have a great one.